why that matters to us. So, let's imagine we have a body. our favorite little dummy potato and we apply some surface forces or what I called tractions before to it and there are also body forces that act on it. So there's some body forces that act on it and typically we these body forces that we care about are, are gravity. Okay. But you could have, if you're, if, you're, if you're doing electromagnetics, then you could also have body forces associated with the polar fields or the electromagnetics, right? So uh, the, the one we talk, typically talk about in solid mechanics is the body force, right? <clears throat> and so if we take our little infinitesimal unit cube, say centered on that body force and we pull it out okay and what did I say last time I said in mechanics if you don't know anything else what should you start with F equals MA right? if you don't know in any problem you're ever trying to solve if you don't know what else to do start with F equals MA okay? now F equals MA is a little bit of a misnomer, right? Because technically, it's the time derivative. It's f equals the time derivative of linear momentum, right? Because mass could be changing, right? And so, if we have, uh, so our, we'll just to say our, our little unit cube has a mass dm, a little differential mass dm, okay? And so there's a little differential, uh, differential momentum vector P that's equal to the velocity times dm, right? And another way to write dm would be to write the density times the volume, right? times dv. If I know the density and the volume, I can get the mass. Okay? So then the total momentum would be the integral of this guy. All right, so the total momentum would be the integral of this thing, okay? And so when we say F equals MA, what we're really saying in place, what we really should be saying to be technically correct in place of MA is the time rate of change of linear momentum, okay? So there we have a min momentum vector. What's its time rate of change? Right? So that the time rate of change is d d t p, right? And so that's equal to d d t rho v d v, right? And so, saying it in words again, the time rate of change of linear momentum is equal to f the force is applied, okay? So in this body, the forces applied are all of the body forces in the body. So all of them, I, I sum them up through integration, right? Plus all of those surface tractions, right?
So I sum them up through integrating over the surface. Okay. Now, if you remember last time, we derived an equation that said that a surface traction is equal to the stress times the normal vector. Right? That's how we derive stress, in fact. Right? Where this, you know, T and N are vectors and, and the stress is a tensor. Okay. So we'll we'll plug that in here. Uh, by the way, I'm not going to actually test you on this kind of detail. I just want to, I'm going to show you some equations in a second. I want you to know where they came from, that I didn't just make them up, that I really just started with F equals MA. Because we can always start with F equals MA, and if we know what we're doing, we can write down the mechanical system. Right? So, by the way, when a lot of times in petroleum engineering, you, you work with empirical models, and you'll end up with like some coefficient out in front of the model, like 87.2 times something equals. That 87.2 didn't come from F equals MA, by the way. It, it's, those are experimental engineering constants, right? But if we really know what we're doing, we can always start with F equal MA. Okay? So I'm going to do something to this term that I have to make an assumption to be allowed, okay? The assumption I'm going to make is that the volume, the dV, doesn't change with time. Okay? This is a valid assumption for small deformations and under other conditions. Okay? If you ever take a nonlinear or an advanced geomechanics course from me, a graduate course, we'll get rid of that restriction and, and we'll learn that to do what I'm about to do, you actually have to use something called Reynolds transport theorem, right? But what I'm going to do, because I'm going to say that the volume doesn't change with time, it's constant, if, if that's true, if that assumption is true, I can move this DDT inside the integral, right? So then I have rho, and we'll also assume rho is constant, just so I can write this. Okay. That's equal to rho b dv plus the stress times the normal ds. Okay. Who remembers calc 3? Vector calculus? You, you said, I'm never going to use vector calculus. Forget that stuff. Man. So if you remember in Calc 3, there's something called a divergence theorem. <coughs> and the divergence theorem allows you to transform a surface integral into a volume integral. Okay? And so, I, I, again, I'm not going to expect you to, I'm just going to write down what you can do. So I'm going to say via... the divergence theorem calc 3 that class you forgot then we can write this guy as a divergence what's wrong with my the divergence of stress the divergence of stress dv. So we can transform the surf surface integral into a volume integral. Okay. And so now you'll notice that all three of my terms here, all three of my terms only have, they're all integrated over the same dv, right? And because dv can be arbitrary, right? If this, if this equality holds, it has to hold for any dv, okay? And, and if that's true, then the sum of the integrands is also equal because the dv is arbitrary, right? So with that, I'll write down the final equation. We have dv 
dt equals the divergence of a stress plus rho b. Okay, this guy is called a Cauchy momentum equation, named after that same guy Cauchy, who the stress tensor is named after. This guy Cauchy was quite productive. He he wrote by himself. He wrote like in his lifetime. I think he lived maybe 50 or 60 years. He wrote like 638 papers, which is a lot. Nowadays, a very successful, very famous professor might write two, three hundred in his career. He wrote, this guy, Kochi, wrote six hundred by himself. He didn't even have graduate students. So, so anyway, uh, let's look at this equation, right? Well, what's, what's dv dt? Acceleration, right? What happens if I multiply this whole equation by volume? Right? I get volume times <coughs> rho, mass, so that's ma on the left, right? And then the, the, these, if, if you worked out the units, you'd see that the divergence of stress uh, gives you a force per unit volume. You multiply by volume, you get force, right? And same, same thing here, um, if you have... Uh, V times rho, then that gives you mass, and the body force is per unit mass, so force per unit mass. So it, it works out. It's just F equals ma. This is the, this is the grown-up version of F equals ma, okay? And so I wrote that very compactly using uh, vector notation, but if we write out all the components, then we get this, and I'm not really sure, but Obviously, those are why those lines aren't showing up on the screen, but those are fractions, right? So that I wrote it compactly in vector notation, but it, it's actually a system of three equations, right? And I also, I wrote U as a displacement, right? Uh, so ddt of U is V, right? The time rate of change of displacement is velocity. And the time rate of change of velocity is acceleration. So I wrote everything on the left-hand side in terms of u. And then I wrote out all the stress components. Okay? 